Do we have any announcements this evening? The Springford High School kicked off Spirit Week today. Various in-school activities and events led up to the homecoming celebration on Saturday, September 29th. Springford students will continue the log standing tradition of parading through the streets of downtown Worsford starting at 12 p.m. The parade will feature the talents of Springford's award-winning Golden Ram marching band and will include the various athletic teams, school board members, local dignitaries, local fire companies, and many student clubs. The parade will end with the free community picnic provided by the Springford Educators, Edu Educators Association. Finally, join fellow Ram fans as Springford Area High School's football team takes on Methacton High School at 2 p.m. in Coach McNally Stadium. Gates will open at 12.30 p.m. for pre-game festivities that will include music, musical performances as well as the introduction of the homecoming court. Spring Ford's homecoming queen will be announced at halftime. Thank you. Thank you. Well, today was what, tie-dye day? Did you guys wear it? Yes, Why'd we Why'd you did. change? You don't want to wear your tie-dye? Oh, should I wear it next time? I'll wear well, it Well, no, it's week. not tie-dye day next time. <laughs> yeah, today that's true. You're right, day. you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, just checking. Public to be heard on agenda items only. Okay. Student rep report. Okay, so we wanted to start out our report by saying what's coming up. We will be restarting these monthly meetings that were held in Dr. Nugent's conference, and this time we're going to be alternating with the ninth grade building. And these will be held the first Wednesdays of every month during first period, where two to three students from each grade of the high school get to come in. We gather in a conference room, and we just talk about events that would be coming up, new ideas that can help improve school, and basic things just to get like the students' voice and get like their opinions and um, see how well we can go from there. And also, we will be, last year, Taylor and I got to visit Upper Providence Elementary. We got, like, the inside scoop of what they were doing. So we really want to continue that this year. And we, like, Jules and I will be personally emailing all the principals and getting dates of when we can visit the school. And we have a specific month associated to a specific school. So we really want to target doing that. Okay, we had our open house at the 1012 Center, and that was on September 20th, which was this week, and they had a lot of stuff here in the cafeteria, lots of clubs, and we stopped in some of the classrooms to see what was going on and how everything was going, and it looked like it was pretty good, mm -hmm. pretty good turnout, so. Okay, so for homecoming coming up, today we had tie-dye day, and then we have powder puff on Friday, we have the 910 dance, which is new now because it's split up, and that is going to be on Friday night. And then we have the homecoming parade, which is Saturday morning. And same thing with the game, also Saturday morning. And then we have the 1112 dance, which is when homecoming normally was last year and in years past, um, which is in the main gym. And this is just a little sneak peek of Spirit Week today. So it was really fun, and tomorrow will be Twin Day. Jules, what are you being tomorrow? I am going to be Cotton Candy. And I will be Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> so that will be fun. And come, please watch the Powder Puff. Jules and I are versing we'll each other. both be in it, so, so lots it'll of be fun. fun. Yes. Are you guys bringing samples also for tomorrow, with Dunkin' Donuts and Cotton Candy? No, but I should. Well, that would be we cool. We should. That's actually a good I would have to, idea. like, stop at a carnival before to grab some Cotton Candy, but. That's a good idea. We'll do yeah. it. What's, what's the rest of the week? You got, what's tomorrow's twin day and then? Wednesday is USA Day and Thursday is Character Day. And for ninth graders, um, Thursday will be their blue and gold day. And then for Friday, the big building will have their pep rally for the co color days and the ninth graders will have their character day. Oh, cool. I know the first part of your report also, I know that the, the building administration, I, I couldn't imagine to welcome you with open arms when you're going to go in and, and kind of check out what's going on in the mm -hmm. building, be able to report on it. So I'm glad that you guys are, 
you know, taking that on and bringing that back. So that's, uh, I look forward to seeing those reports as well. So thank you. Good job. Okay, policy. Policy met on Wednesday, September 12th in the district office. We reviewed the uh, child abuse, the final draft of the child abuse policy and agreed to move that policy forward for a first reading. Following the policy review by the solicitor, there were a few slight changes made to that policy. Um, secondly, we discussed non-discrimination in employment practices. We reviewed the final draft of that policy and agreed to move that policy forward for a first reading following, again, uh, a review by the solicitor. And there was some additional language to support uh, the school board being informed of any of those issues that might come up um, also. And then we also discussed Title I parent involvement. And Mrs. Bass attended the meeting. She reviewed and shared the changes to the Title, parent one, invo Title I parent involvement. Um, we reviewed the final draft and agreed to move that po policy forward. Also pending the review by the solicitor, there were no changes to that policy. Then we moved on and revisited use of facilities and we reviewed the feedback that we collected at the uh, town hall meeting on May 14th, or, or small town hall meeting on May 14th. We discussed several topics that were discussed at that time, including service uh, charges, rental fees, security, and building usage, ideas that some people may have had to accommodate the different groups uh, were presented and we discussed those in the policy meeting. Um, Dr. Roach uh, is following up with Chief Boyer and Mr. Hunter regarding safety and security for evening and weekend rentals and we'll bring that information back. I also met with them for a discussion last week about these policies and um, Mr. Hunter is reviewing some of the costs that we had presented before just to validate those and take a closer look at those while uh, Chief Boyer is looking at what other school districts do in terms of safety and security during the evening and weekend rentals. So as soon as we get that information back, we will try to firm this up and I would ask that we pull something together to do some kind of brief presentation to the board. I'm hoping by the end of the year, there's been so much time and energy put into that um, policy. As far as new business is concerned, uh, student laptop and device policy as part of the modernized learning program will be ready. That policy will be ready for review uh, in October. So that will be on our agenda in October. So that's it for policy. And does anyone have any questions? All right, <clears throat> Western Center, Dr. Dressler. Uh, that would be me again for oh. Western. Already used to be me. It is, it is still Dr. Dressler, but oh. this time um, I took the notes. So um, at the meeting on September 10th, they, uh, the JOC talked about the start of the school year. It's gone quite well. They're very excited to have all of the staff and students back in the building. It's great to walk into the classes and the students are already actively engaged in learning. They're working really hard on safety certifications and getting really active in the shops um, starting in the last two weeks. The Western Center is going to be hosting a Boy Scout Merit Badge College and offering over 17 different merit badges to the Scouts. That's coming up on October 20th. There's a Girls' Night Out on November 8th. It's the third annual Girls' Night Out in November. It's a great way to market some of the non-traditional programming to young women within the districts that send the students there. Um, there's an open house on December 5th. That's a big recruitment event for Western. They um, will host this annual event again in December for prospective students and the online application window opens October 1st. So that's coming up very soon. Um, just reached an agreement with Montgomery County Community College where students in certain classes can earn up to 25 college credits combining their NOCHI scores, industry certifications earned, store credits and dual enrollment credits. Mr. Chaminsky, the new principal there, is in the process of ironing out the details about dual enrollment classes being offered at Western. Um, so they're, they're really working to continue to offer more and more opportunities there. Uh, just a few weeks ago, they also received a donation of a forklift, which will now be available to offer another industry credential to students um, within the carpentry, electrical, HVAC, and metal tech areas. Um, 
all have this as one of their PDE approved certifications and that can now be offered to the students enrolled in those disciplines. There are also two pieces of mach machinery for the diesel tech program. They're receiving a donation of a triaxle as well as a, a backhoe, so they're excited to have that equipment coming on. And after the first two weeks, uh, the enrollment is finally settled. There are always minor adjustments to the numbers based on students moving in and out of the district or no longer choosing to attend Western. So right now, they are at 552 total with 222 coming from Springford alone. The focus really is on moving from good to great. That is, that is just an ongoing theme that we hear and discuss at all of these JOC meetings. Um, and with that in mind, they've implemented that at each quarter and at the end of each year, there's a gold standard of teaching award that's going to be given out to um, the teachers that are really doing an excellent job. And Mr. Chaminsky has been going around and really seeing which teachers are really putting forth that effort to bring the kids out, get the kids engaged in what they're doing. He's, he's making an honest effort to do that. And that's great to see that because he's new this year too. So that engagement for him helps him to get closer to his staff and, and build rapport there. Um, so it seems, to be, it seems to be working over there. Um, that was about it. We had a few other brief discussions, but they're never really long meetings, and that, that was good. October is a month that they do not have too much going on, so we do not meet again until November, and that's been history. That's the way it usually is. Anybody have any questions about JOC or Western? Which programs are the uh, programs that you target that, went, that the female students aren't in at the Western Center? And, uh, and do you know what the percentage now of enrollment is for male versus female? I, I don't. I don't know what those percentages are. I can certainly ask Mr. Denner at the next um, meeting and get an idea of those. That, 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 that event, that girls' night out, is November 8th. So um, we should be meeting prior to that, but I can reach out to Mr. Moritz and two and just find out what are they actually targeting and what are the percentages because he was very specific that that event, that girls' night out, is to really focus on getting the girls into some of the, away from just the cosmetology and the cooking and into some of the other pieces that they offer there. I think it's, it's generally the non-traditional fields of uh, auto repair, carpentry, things like that that generally have not attracted many female students and they're trying to introduce them to the possibilities of careers in those fields. Have they done this before? Yeah, this is their third one. And actually, as Dr. Dressler was saying that, I do recall that last year there was a female student in the automotive who had, was it, was it in diesel? Diesel, who had actually won an award and had done very yes. well in that course. Okay, uh, PSBA. The Pennsylvania School Board Association is very much in favor of getting the public behind Senate Bill 1095 that was sponsored by Senator Thomas McGarrigal of Chester and Delaware counties. Senate Bill 1095 revises Pennsylvania's one-size-fits-all mandate to pass three keystone exams to receive a diploma by instead establishing multiple rigorous pathways to demonstrate college and career readiness. So instead of just having to pass these three exams, there are other ways in which you can uh, qualify for a diploma. Now this bill has passed out of the Senate and is now in the House Education Committee. And- It passed <clears throat> House Education this morning. Did it? Yeah. Out it's, of the committee. It's, it's out of committee, it's to the full House now. So that has to then pass the House and be sent to uh, what has to, I guess they're negotiating between the House, the Senate, and the PSBA is involved in that negotiation to uh, try to smooth out any rough spots there are in these <clears throat> various pathways that they're trying to implement. Yeah, there's some language um, differences and some preferences that uh, the House has versus the Senate. So PSBA um, has been involved with that um, as, as has, um, MCIU uh, legislative team. So um, it did pass um, the House Committee on Education this morning. It's going to the full House. Um, really important that everybody statewide, you know, support it. Um, it will be difficult in, in some instances, but 
Um, standardized testing has always been, you know, a, a sore spot, um, and instead of teaching students to the Keystone tests, it, it allows some alternative um, vehicles and, and mechanisms for students to be able to graduate successfully without um, having to take the Keystone tests. That being said, remember, Keystone tests have again been pushed back to the 20, 2020-2021 school year, just as a reminder. Yeah, I mean, we know how overworked the House and Senate are, and they only have 10 days left through which they can get this bill passed. So it's important <clears throat> that the pressure be put on to get this through the House and to the governor's desk because uh, <clears throat> they will need to rest very soon. That's all I have to say about that report. Uh, I'm tired of hearing about the Keystones. They've been, what, nine years, eight years they've been Keystone exams and then changing this and changing that. Legislative committee. Um, uh, so um, House and Senate returned to session today. Um, there are anywhere from nine to ten voting days between now and the end of the session. Um, that being said, there may be some days that either House or Senate will um, turn to non-voting days to allow members to return to their home areas for campaigning purposes. So we'll see. Um, doesn't sound like there's going to be a whole lot of activity over the next um, month or so. Um, with that said, again, um, the big, um, the Act 1 index um, was published at a 2.3 percent uh, and that was published on September 15th in the bulletin. Um, graduation requirements, again, the Keystone um, and, and this um, Senate bill. Um, <clears throat> 1095 was a big issue. Um, there are still some um, looking at House Bill uh, 2574, which is um, being looked at by the House Committee on Education. Um, and it really speaks specifically to dress codes for teachers and um, whether or not certain uh, provisions in school code that, that disallow um, maybe wearing a logo or something like that might be a First, <clears throat> First Amendment right violation. And so trying to, I think, really just bring code again. It's an old code, trying to bring it up to uh, be consistent with other, other language. Um, Otherwise, sunscreen protection, um, which was House Bill 1228, um, Senate Education Committee is looking at that tomorrow. Um, that really allows students to apply sunscreen by themselves as opposed to having to have a doctor's note. Um, and um, so we'll see, you know, how that progresses. I think that there have been some concerns in the past with allergies and kids sharing and, and those sorts of things. So it would be, you know, a non-spray sunscreen and all those good things. Um, the only other thing that we really talked about this week, um, school safety um, grant funding. Again, that grant application for um, Part A is open right now. Um, all applications received will receive a minimum of $25,000 um, during this school year for um, safety and security grants. And then Part B, which is a much more complex um, application, would be specifically targeted. So we would have to put forth um, a, a rationale. What are we doing? Why are we doing it? Um, what would the money be used for? Um, and, and a specific dollar amount. Um, and that is also um, open. Um, and they are all due no later than October 12th. Um, and the only other note was um, our chair of the legislative committee um, has resigned his seat. He was on the Pottstown School Board. Um, so uh, the vice chair, which was myself, has been um, placed in the chair position, and we have a new vice chair. So um, lastly, there is a really exciting opportunity coming up. Um, board members, you do have um, a printout that, that was provided to you. Um, it's Communities United for Students' Future um, and the School Works Program, and they're coming together um, asking two members of a community, whether they be parents, teachers, board members, um, staff, to volunteer to uh, participate in an event um, and the it, it's focused on fair funding. Um, they force kind of pushing the state to pay its fair share for public schools.
by increasing K-12 school funding by at least $3 billion through the state's fair funding formula, adequately funding special education for students with special needs and career and technical education for all students who want it, um, delivering targeted property tax relief to those who need it, um, and increased state revenues to pay for these investments in public schools. Um, the, the event um, is scheduled for Saturday, November 17th, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., and it's at the Pennsylvania Farm Show Complex. Anybody who's interested, please, um, please, 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 we definitely need representation um, of our community um, on, on Saturday, November 17th. Um, please reach out to me. Um, anybody who doesn't have my contact information, you can find it on springforward.net under the board tab. Any questions? I just want to comment also about the grants that um, the Western is also applying for that grant to enhance the security there. Um, Dan Schminski is working on that along with the support of Chris Moritz. Great. Any other questions, comments? MCI, we're actually meeting this Wednesday, so no report. Superintendent, superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Dabella. I'd like to urge the community to make sure that you check the Spring Forward website. We have launched this year a parent speaker series in which we are inviting parents from the community to come in and, and uh, we will provide uh, various topics uh, throughout the year uh, of interest to parents. So if you'll check the website, you can see when um, those meetings will be held and what the topic will be for that month. Uh, secondly, um, we had, two weeks ago, we had uh, Roars for Days uh, here in the community. There was a huge turnout. Um, anytime we do something with the community, it seems to be very well attended. But we had some of our students put together some uh, video footage of that uh, event. So I'd take just a minute to show you that. Well, I happen to have um, a 1965 Corvette that I've owned since it was brand new and it gives me the one opportunity I take all year to put it out in the rain and show it off to people. It definitely has to be the car show um, and watching my son grow up. He's come every year and now he's at Spring Ford at Royersford Elementary School and Kindergarten. My whole life, which is 32 short years, um, I moved from Royersport to Linfield and haven't made it further. And now my kid, my daughter goes to Springport also. I have been part of this community. Uh, my husband and I have bought a house here in 2009, but I grew up in Springford. I went to Springford, graduated in 2001, and now we have children in the district. Love it here. This community is, is such a great community. It's very family oriented. Uh, it's a very tight knit community, and uh, it's a very fun part. Uh, it's very fun to be a part of this community. I've been a part of the Spring Ford, Royers Ford, Limerick community for 16 years. I love being a teacher at Spring Ford and we're raising our kids in the community, so it's the best place to be. This community is a great community. I mean, I've lived here 17 years, served on the board for 12 years. We've seen this community come full circle. It's a wonderful community to raise your family in. It's great for you kids in the school district. I hope you're having a lot of fun, but you're learning a lot too. That's very important. Um, I'd recommend this area to anybody. I love Royer's Ford because of exactly things like this. You taking the time from Spring Ford to interview folks, community day happening, even though there was rain in the sky and people coming out anyway. Last night, all over social media, you could just scroll through and see people being excited about coming out to support their local community. People are gonna walk down today, they're gonna see all of our local vendors, they're gonna see what brings the heart of this community together, which is all of the people, our businesses and organizations, and everybody knows each other. It's really, really fun. So I love Royers Ford for like a million reasons, but those are just a few. I love it, it's a nice community and we get to celebrate most of the years and I lived here most of my life. Um, it's just a fun way to meet everyone because everyone kind of lives here and just walking around I can see people that I know whenever and it's just really fun. Probably be able to hang out with friends and family and do fun activities and learn about the community. It is uh, kind of a close-knit community and it, you know a lot of people. It's more like a small town than a big city. I love how there's just so many people out here even on a day that is not that nice. Uh, and there's people from all parts of the community. You see doctors, you see family businesses, you see food trucks, everyone's out. 
So I love Royer's Fort because I grew up here. I always have been in the area my whole life, and it's just a well-knit, small community. And uh, yeah, it's just home. Uh, we love living here in the community. Uh, we've made lots of great friends, uh, great school district, um, and just a fun place to be. It's just a nice little community and a great place to live. So we are able to take that, so we are able to take that mobile, TV studio, mobile TV studio out and, and, uh, and uh, are to students are able to do the interviews and, and, and uh, edit the film and uh, edit the film and right on put spot. this together so right on they spot. Do a nice so job. They, they do a nice job. It. They had a lot of fun Hello with it. Everyone Hello, everyone, and welcome back to RCTV. Welcome back to RCTV. I'm Nick Elsner here with I'm Mark, 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 Mark Tony. Tonight we have a fun, fun field hockey. matchup of field Bring hockey. Ford Rams Bring Ford Rams first See, it's fun. See, it's fun. Any questions? Any questions? Solicitor's report. Solicitor's report. Uh, excuse me, I'm John Moravich. Uh, excuse me, I'm John Moravich. Uh, thank you for letting me sit in for Mark Fitzgerald tonight. Mark had a conflict. I think it's been about two or three, years, been about two or three years since I've been here before, but no, uh, no, otherwise no report. No, otherwise no report but thank you for tonight. allowing me a substitute tonight. Well, since you have no report, you're well, since you have no again. report, you're going to come back again. <laughs> the shorter the better. Right? The shorter the better, right? <laughs> okay. Okay. Meeting minutes. Meeting oh, wait, minutes. Before I go into that. Oh wait, before I go into the board that, did have an exec session the board did have an exec evening, session this uh, evening prior to the meeting, uh, to, discuss to, the meeting to discuss a legal matter. Meeting minutes. A meeting motion minutes. For a, and B. a motion for A and B. Motion so second. Any comment? Motion so second. Any comment? All in favor say aye. All in favor say aye. 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 Personnel. Personnel. Items A through items F. Items A through F. Motion so second. Any comment? Motion so second. Any comment? All in favor say aye. All in favor say aye. aye. Finance, I, a, finance I. a through I. Motion. 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 Hmm? Motion. Hmm? This you good? This okay. you good? Motion second. Okay. Any comment? Motion second. Any comment? All in favor say aye. All in favor say aye. aye. Program and curriculum. Program and curriculum. A. Motion second. second. Any comment? Motion second. Any comment? All in favor say aye. All in favor say aye. 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 Conferences and workshops. Conferences a and workshops. E. A through E. Motion second, any comment? Motion second, any comment? All in favor say aye. All in favor say aye. aye. Other aye. business? Other business? A through J. A through J. Okay, J. Okay, J. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Was it? Uh, was was it, that the only uh, one? Was that the only one? I just want to check. A through okay, I. I. Just want to check. A through I. Motion. Motion. Any comment? Any comment? All in favor say aye. All in favor say aye. 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 For board comment, for board uh, before comment, uh, going before anywhere else, anybody going else, else, I, I, anybody else I, I do want to make a statement. Um, unfortunately, Spring Ford's unfortunately, been Spring rocked Ford's again, been rocked uh, again uh, this past week. Uh, this past with week, losing one, with of own, losing one of our own. Um, Bill Rasich has been, Bill with, Rasich the district has been for, with the district I for I don't even know the number. I don't even know the number of years. Forty years. I think it was forty years. I think it was forty plus years. But again, Bill was again Bill was a dedicated. Educator to uh, educator to Springford. He's, to Springford. He's, he's, he was uh, loved and admired. Loved by, and admired by many throughout, by many uh, not, throughout only district, uh, not only in the district but uh, throughout the community. Uh, I've known Bill probably, uh, I've known Bill probably somewhere, somewhere twelve plus years. 12 I met him plus years. through, I met him some, of through some, some of the youth in. programs I'm involved uh, in. Bill's just been a tremendous, uh, Bill's just tremendous, been a tremendous, asset, tremendous to asset to the community. Um, he worked diligently. Um, he worked diligently every day with all the students, making sure that all their needs as best as he could. Involved in, uh, be involved we're in, were uh, we're met uh, at the eighth grade center. Uh, I know, Bill uh, I know, recently Bill retired, recently this, retired past this past uh, June, I know we, uh, and I know we missed him as missed well when him he was retiring. Well but, he was we retiring but we uh, also knew that, uh, knew that he would be around. Uh, he would be around uh, still within the Springford uh, community. Still within the Springford community. And, community. When, we and when we got the news. Um, over the weekend, um, over the weekend, many, I think many, many were many devastated by, were devastated by, by, that. by and know, that. Again, and Bill, I know, again, uh, Bill will be greatly uh, will missed. Be greatly um, missed. So with that, um, so with that, that, I would ask uh, that, that we could take a moment of silence in remembrance for Bill Rasich.
Thank you. Any other comment? Thank you. Any other comment? Yeah, a couple things. Uh, yeah, today, a couple I attended things. Funeral, today I attended the funeral for Ginny Prevost. Ginny was a great friend of my, my wife Mary and me for over 35 years. She also was a guidance she counselor, was a guidance for, counselor for, for elementary for 23 years. Ginny was like a second mother, was like a second to, mother to her students, her, and she spent not only working to better, not only working to better their lives from an educational perspective, but Ginny also worked to make them safe both inside and outside the classroom. To continue, to, her to continue her legacy as an advocate, as an advocate for students at Springfield Elementary, at Forest Elementary. Elementary, I'm asking everyone in the community to attend the, attend the beef and beverage fundraiser for the, the benefit of the Warriors Fort Home School on October 26, and also to make a, and a donation. To, uh, donation. Which will be for a scholarship for the Ginny Prevost Scholarship Fund that'll benefit uh, that'll Royals benefit uh, Royals uh, students when they go to college. Uh, for more information, uh, on, the more information on the scholarship, contact the business office, uh, contact the business and office, and, and, you, can office and, 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 and you can get information on the fundraiser at the Royals Ford Elementary School webpage. Also, also. I was, um, thinking about the goals I was thinking the about the goals for the and district, we continually and we say continually that we say be that we want to be the state. top district in the state. I think that if we were, serious, that about if we were that serious about that we objective, we need to determine, to what, the metrics determine what the metrics are for that, for that and goal, then set, and then uh, set uh, ways to achieve get, the goals, ways to achieve the, the goals, the roadmap, on how to achieve those metrics so we can actually get there. I don't think if we I think we talk about it, we're not going to get there. So if we're really serious about that, that's something we should work on. That's something we should work on for next year. This year, so next year, we have we have the the superintendent school district objectives for reaching that goal. For reaching that goal. That, that's the first thing, and that, then that's the, the first thing, thing. and then the second thing, thing I saw on something television. Uh, on television. Author, there was an author written a book about who written a book financial about education for financial students. education for students, and, uh, and he was stressing uh, the importance. He was stressing uh, the importance uh, and, 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 and like to see like to see added to the national curriculum. To educate students, to educate in students all aspects in of all aspects of investing and loans and taxes and those things. So they understood those things when they get out of school. I'm not sure what we do and what depth we go into at Springford, but I think that's something we should look at at least from the Curriculum committee perspective of, of what a comprehensive what a comprehensive program would be. Program would so be. The kids understood so the all these kids things. Understood all these what, things. You know, how they start preparing how they start preparing for their retirement, for from, day their retirement from day one when they get high out of school and when they start high school working, and when they start working whether it's after they go to college or they, they, go to college or they start in some other profession because things like social security aren't, like aren't going to be enough to support, them, enough to support them when they retire. Then when they retire, if it's even there, so kids really need kids really need part of their education. part of their education. Understand so they understand finances and finances and retirement and all those things when they get out so of school can be, so that they uh, can be at uh, least secure, uh, least secure from a financial throughout perspective their throughout their lifetime. Any other comment? Any other comment? I have, um, just I two have, things um, I want to add. Two things I want to add. One is the homecoming parade. The homecoming that parade that was mentioned is Saturday, and, is Saturday and, and we do. I have secured, a trailer, secured a trailer that will hold all, will of, the hold members, all so of the board members. So we can so talk after. We can talk after. Who's please let me know coming who's that, um, coming to that. Um, and then the second thing. And then the second thing is that the, the snap fundraiser, the snap fundraiser that my office, Coldwell Banker Harside, does for the snap program was moved was moved in the spring. Due to this to fall due one to of our one of own our being very own ill. being so very ill. Wasn't so it wasn't the time really to have party, so really have a party. Moved, so we have moved the party for a party, for a party Saturday, to Saturday, um, October 13th. Um, October 13th. Um, it's um, in my barn and in my barn and tickets are 25 hours at the door. So, so please come out, please, please, come out, please tell um, your friends. It is being catered um, by Mike McCluskey at the railroad. There is a DJ and there are a number of prizes that will be wrapped off that are specifically related to, related the, home. to so the home. Ceiling so fans, ceiling contractor fans, services, contractor services, free chimney, free chimney things sweep, like that things like that will be the um, prizes that are raffled off. Hope to make this, uh, this, make this, uh, this is our third event. annual we event. We hope it to make it our biggest yet. So Saturday, so Saturday October 13th, 7 o'clock. Thanks. Any other comment? Any other comment? Huh? Huh? No. No. <laughs> All right. Uh, public All right. to be heard. Uh, public to be heard. All right. Do I have a motion to? All right. Do I have a motion to? Huh? Huh?
My name is Melissa Dockerty. My name is Melissa Dockerty. Two hundred eight Knox Drive, Collegeville. And I am here with two of my friends. I am here with two of my friends. We have um, concern. We, we have concern. We send John our Paul. children to Pope John Paul. And we have a busing and concern. And we have a busing concern. Um, we live two miles. Um, from we live two miles from the school. And it takes our children fifty, and it takes minutes, our children 50 to minutes to school every morning. To get to school every morning. Um, so this is something, um, we, wanted so this is something we wanted to bring up to discuss. Mm -hmm. You know, is there tax no, dollars? There's we tax like dollars. We feel like we should have for an allocation a for bus to a direct bus to school. Well, well, the way we're running our the, program, the way we're running our program in the morning is that PJP uh, students PJP students uh, get on the bus uh, get on the bus students. with our students. And so and so we don't have just one we don't have just one PJP bus or two PJP bus or two PJP buses or three PJ buses. In the morning they get on in the morning they get on with our students. We hub them to the high school and then we run two buses over to PJP. So we don't take every bus that has a PJP that has a PJP student on to to the school to the school. We hub them from over here. Um, in the evenings, in the evenings, while the rosters on while the, buses, the, rosters on the buses, uh, we have three buses dedicated uh, we have three buses to going dedicated to PJP, to going picking, to PJP, up, the picking up the home, students and running them while home. While the rosters are while the rosters are uh, about fifty students uh, on about each fifty bus. students on each bus. We're running less than twenty, running on, less each than 20 on each of those three buses. Uh, we followed them for a few we days. We followed them for a few uh, days, and for example, uh, one day we had example, twelve, one day we had 12 students, students on a bus, sixteen students on a bus, and eighteen students on a bus. And we were able to determine that for those buses to run those routes, it was taking right around an hour. Uh, uh, in the afternoon, in the uh, afternoon, because those buses, uh, are, because running those buses are running a route. Um, um, it is not efficient. It is not efficient for us to run every bus in the every bus in the morning that has. That has a student on it, student to, PJP. On it to PJP. However, I think, in the, not, however, I think that would not be efficient, and I don't and think PJP, would, don't be think PJP very would be very happy about, about it. Very happy nor about do it. we have a nor do we have a bus designated bus in the morning that just in the morning that just picks up PJP um, students. Um, once again, if we did once that, again, if we, we did that, if we had three buses dedicated, you'd, dedicated, you'd still be running an hour route, route, if not more, uh, in the morning. Uh, in the morning. Uh, so we're trying to be as so we're trying to be as efficient as we possibly can. For but that matter, in the but in the uh, afternoons, uh, it is taking that bus. It is around taking that bus around that an hour to run that route. Well, I think in the afternoon, well, I think in the afternoon, activities. kids have yes. more activities. So yes, it would be so more beneficial. It would be more beneficial to have afternoon the afternoon runs, the afternoon runs, runs the ran in the morning for the rather students. Than, I mean, it's the rather students who are I mean, suffering, students for, 50 are suffering for fifty miles. minutes to go two miles. Well, understand that the well, bus, is running, that the bus is running a route. It's though. running a route. It's running it's a route. Going straight it's not from your house going straight from your house to the but school. But in the afternoon, it's going. But in the afternoon, it's going from school to our house. So why it's can't that route? So why can't that route run the same in the morning? It's still running a route in the morning. I mean, still running a route. I mean, still running a route in the afternoon. Can't the afternoon? Can't the afternoon route be ran in the morning? And why is that? And why is that? Well, we have several issues. Well, we have several issues. It's not efficient. It's not efficient for us. Also, we also we also have to be very aware of the number of buses that we have and our ability to find drivers for those buses. But it's the PJP. But it's the PJP kids that are suffering. It's not efficient for us. But we pay tax. But we pay tax. They are for 50 minutes. Two miles away. It's two miles away. But that's not unusual in the district. We try to keep our bus routes under an hour for all of our students, not just PJP. So it's about the same for so it's our about the same well. for our students as well. We're trying to keep them. Under We're trying an hour, to keep them under an hour. All of them. That's our goal. That's our goal. Because okay. we have okay. a petition. Because we, we have a petition that we started. That we have 75 signatures in a week of taxpayers, of district taxpayers in this district who are very and unhappy like changes, and would like so. to see changes. So well, we're, we're aware that well, we're, we're aware that you know uh, you know students that attend not students that attend not for profit public schools or private schools we are obligated to we are obligated to transport within a 10 mile radius within a 10 mile radius and even in those and situations even in those situations we try to keep it within an hour. But um, we are running routes. But we are running so routes. The fact so that you live the fact that you live school, two miles from the school and it takes fifty minutes to get to school. You have to understand the, bus, have to understand is running the bus is running a route. It's going straight not from your house. Going straight from your house. So you talk about being efficient. That's not efficient. Running a route. Running a route. Being efficient. That's being not efficient. efficient that's not efficient. Route. Running a route. That's fifty minutes for two that's miles. That's fifty minutes for two miles. That's two miles from your house. That's two miles from your house. The entire route, the entire route well, is a little longer. Well, I understand that, but I don't understand, understand, why, but I don't understand why the routes in the afternoon can't be run in the morning. Well, be, well, be, 
it's just not fishing. You're it's still just not be fishing. You're still going to be looking at an hour run. You're, you're not getting. You're, you're, not, you're not getting. Saving you're not any saving any time by running your own route. We're showing that in the evening. You're still running hour long routes in the evening. We run in the morning. You're still going to be running hour long routes. It's not going to be any faster. It's not going to be any faster. anything, we are. If anything, we are faster in the morning because we're able to. Some of our routes that PJP students get on are actually shorter. And so we're able to bring them over. And so we're able to bring them over and hub them over and take them over to the school. Well, I don't think any of them are. Well, I don't think any of them are efficient at this point to make those kids suffer. Okay. Good evening. My name is Andreina Erwin, and I live in Lingfield. Good evening. My name is Andreina Erwin, and I live in Lingfield. I have a question. I have a question that I don't, that I don't, I don't think I haven't heard anybody, heard anybody this. worried about what this. Would happen? What would happen if uh, if HR uh, bill, HR bill passes? And as we know, we are, as we know we are going to be defunded. A lot of our and teachers, lot of our will, have teachers will have to leave because be that money will be used for vouchers and for public school. And for I haven't heard anybody. I haven't heard about anybody that. worried I'm about sorry, that. What's your I, I'm sorry. What's your what question? What happens if what HR happens if HR 16 passes? Um, um, so, so. <laughs> This, this, uh, this, uh, we, we've asked. I we, mean, we've I've asked. I mean, I've talked about that for myself for three probably years. three years. Uh, I brought it up numerous. Uh, I brought it up for, numerous times for the community, for, to, for the community you know, to, to be involved, you know, contact to be involved, our contact our legislators. Um, I mean, they're the ones that I mean, are. They're the ones that are. Passing, the ones that pass the bill. They're the ones yeah, that pass are, the bill. Yeah, but you are. You are our representative for this school. For this school, right? And I've been in Harrisburg. Right, and I've been in Harrisburg personally, personally myself. Uh, with Colleen, uh, with Colleen, and I know Don has gone, and you know, gone down, and, 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 and we've we've actually talked we've about actually this. talked about this. Um, the, um, it's been all over. It's been all over the state. This has been going on for multiple years. Um, I mean, I'm not sure what I, I mean. I'm not sure what as, as school board representatives, I'm not sure what else we can do. That's why I mean, and that's why we told the community that you need to contact your legislators. You need to contact your legislators. We've we've, 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 we've talked contacted. Legislators. We've talked you know to what legislators. Happens when you we know what happens them? when we contact them? A staff member just answers and they'll tell that the person is going to contact back to us, and they never do. That's the same thing for us. That's the same thing for us. That's why I mean, that's that's why these you know these state legislative elections are important. And I'm not sure what else. I'm not sure. What else? We, I mean, we've done, we, we've we've done, done many things. We've done many things over the, over the, you know, the over several years. You know, the several uh, years uh, related to vouchers. So the question would be, so the question would be why we keep on voting for the same people to be there. At this point, right. at this one, point of the one of the things that's proving you know, itself and, out. And, you know, and, um, and actually, I had the opportunity, um, actually, I had the opportunity to, to listen to a presentation uh, by. Listen to a presentation by um, um, another another uh, president of the, uh, president Bethlehem, of the school Bethlehem Area School, as well school as District, as well the, as the uh, president of the uh, Pennsylvania School Board Association. Uh, within his community, um, within his community um, parents have, um, been, together parents have to been together to form a committee, form a committee um, and to identify key, identify key issues, issues and to then work, work with the legislators, with the legislators um, on those issues, um, and, on to those really issues and to really you know, send out you know send out blast emails to other parents and to really kind of drum up support to help where needed to help support the one district. Of the one of the things that has proven is itself if out is if we pass a resolution or if board members, or contact, if board members contact legislators, they kind of just chalk it up to a school board complaining about something and they say, oh, okay. They're, 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 the the, the ten, is tendency is to more, respond much more um, quickly when, quickly their, when constituents their constituents are contacting, are them, contacting and them and one constituent contacting them, they'll say yes, thank you, they'll say but, yes, if thank you receive, but if they um, receive communications, um, from, multiple communications from multiple constituents, it starts to, it starts um, to seep um, in. Seep in. Um, and that has proven um, itself, and that has to, proven be itself to be a more effective means of, means of changing Changing a, direction or changing. a direction or changing. So as a school, so board, as a school board, shouldn't you be trying, to, you get be trying to get the taxpayers, the taxpayers into this because, into this it's, your because it's your interest well, too? Certainly, and, well, and certainly, and, um, and I think um, I if you, you were here all evening, I believe you were here all evening, and I did share um, one of the initiatives, um, that, is the initiatives that is a community trying initiative, to, trying to, um, get, to two um, get two members from our district to represent us, but to begin to band together. 
effort on school to focus so on school funding. So there are certain initiatives that are absolutely um, out there. We, we provide and, reports and, I've, and, and I've, you know, asked um, for you know, community, asked members, for to community members to take action on vouchers and, on and, vouchers other, and, issues, and other issues since I've been, um, on, the since I've been on the legislative um, committee. I'm not sure if you've been in attendance in the meetings or had an opportunity to maybe replay them on RCTV, but certainly when various issues have come up, we have asked the community to get involved. But again, it's not but something, again, it's not something um, we're doing it too. We're doing it too. I mean, we're, you know, we are I mean, passing, the, you know, resolutions are passing the resolutions or we are reaching, out, reaching out, but oftentimes, oftentimes um, we don't have as much, we don't have as much um, um, influence. As influence. You have as more influence. You have voters. more influence than us. No, we don't. No, because, we don't. Because you because can reach, because the, reach the, the Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania uh, board, uh, district, uh, board and district, district, and it's different. Because then you would, have more, then you would have more reach than we us. Just call our we just call our representative, and I already told you what happened. Oh, the, from an influence oh, standpoint, from an influence we, we standpoint, do we, we do have influence. We, and we petition, and we petition, and we talk with the legislative, both the House and the Senate, multiple times, uh, but, uh, but there becomes a time, becomes when, a time when community the community has to get involved as well, get involved and, that's as well. We, and that's when we, I've done it myself, sat, done at, it myself, board sat at this board table and, and talked and told the community that you need to contact, that you need your, to contact but on your legislators. Side, but on the flip side, you know, everyone really needs, you know, to, understand really needs to understand the bill, what's the going bill on, because, there are, going on, because there are some very positive things related to the bill as well. I mean, it's... Can you, it's, name um, can you name me some? Huh? Can you name huh? some? Can you name some of the positive, of the positive things? Yeah, it's if you, things in yeah, it's if you live, depends on where you really live. It really on, has an impact on, city, on city schools and in that. So, I mean, there are there are, there are, there are things, things that legislators look at that you know. Unfortunately, it's a bill. Unfortunately, it's a bill that would have an impact on all an impact on all school districts in the state. And that I know that that's been questioned in the past as far as passing vouchers that are specific to certain. Uh, areas that uh, are, areas that are, uh, you know, are more depressed, uh, you know, more than, depressed other areas, than other areas. Uh, uh, school, systems are, you know, school systems are a certain, are way, or a certain way or whatever it may uh, be. And that's even uh, wider. There's even funding, that they're, there's funding the that they're looking at the bottom 15 or whatever was the bottom 15, or whatever whatever was the bottom 10 percent within schools and within the state, within the figuring state, out how they could increase funding or work with those schools to provide an educational system that that's at the same levels of other schools within rural areas. Uh, so there's a lot of different. Uh, things so there's a lot of different on, things that are going uh, on, that, and we report that, on it all. And we here, report on it all here uh, at the board table. Uh, at the board table, you know, there is a time. You know, there is a time you know, as, when as parents, you know, as, as parents in the community, you, you have to get involved. You, as well. you have to get involved as well. I mean, it's and Christina is is right. Christina is we is right. I mean, we we as a board, a nine member board, have a certain amount of influence from a legislative standpoint. But also, when there's when there's big bills that are going on, when these legislative offices got any data. Get over, get over in a day to calls with from parents calls or from parents or community uh, that also has a that also has, has a, an impact uh, it has an impact on them as well so it's, on it's them as well a, so it's it's kind of a joint effort you know a joint effort to get bills you know, that get are in place bills that are in place for the benefit, for of, of, the benefit of, of everyone I have another question. I have another uh, question. How can we make, uh, uh, can we make uh, dual enrollment more, dual enrollment more attractive, attractive for parents and for students, parents and to, know students to know how they can benefit from I it? Have here the I have here the letter that Montgomery County that Community, Montgomery Community College, College, Community College sent, sent to my daughter, Nicole, Nicole Erwin, where she's already, where she's already, where she's already in the Dean's you know, List, you know, Nicole is in 11th grade, and, grade, and, and she has earned already four college classes. So I think there should be. I think there should be. I've been talking already. I've been about talking dual already about dual enrollment for almost a year. That is correct. If you that is correct. And, and as we discussed, as with, we you discussed with you previously, we talk about during, this um, during course selection. Um, course selection. It, is it is in the course selection um, book. If Mrs. Bass was here, um, she, Bass was here she would chime in and obviously chime in and say the same thing that she attends that. We talk about it at that evening. We talk about it at every course selection opportunity. It is a balance. That we talk about in curriculum, actually, as to where the opportunities outweigh the, um, the um, selection. 
and selection. What we have found, what we have is, found that is that the students here at Springboard are taking more AP courses rather than our dual enrollment. Um, one of the discussions, um, that, we of the discussions that we had even last week is, is several years you know, ago, we several years ago, we embarked on a global studies, a global studies program with Arcadia University. With Arcadia University. Um, it is an absolutely, um, it is an phenomenal, absolutely program. phenomenal program. We struggle to get kids, struggle to, to, get kids to start and stay in start and this stay program. In this program. Um, and again, they're getting, um, and again, college, they're credits getting college credits at an extreme discount from Arcadia and can matriculate into Arcadia almost almost a full year of credits. However, year of however, credits. however it's not where the kids, not where the where kids, we're finding, where we're finding their interest lie, where we're finding their interest is, is in AP courses. our and AP I courses. And I can defer to our two um, student, reps, um, and student and reps and get their well perspective on, as well on, on, on where your interests where lie, your cause interests I lie, because I know both of you at least are in a so one AP like course. So if you'd like to chime in, please. So far for my entire high school, I've taken three AP courses, and currently I'm taking dual credit speech. I feel maybe it's there's because more like, there's more variety in AP courses, and also they're at school. Like for example, I take speech, so I don't have to go to Monaco. For, for some people, I know a lot of kids are taking criminal justice. Like you're just like absolutely amazing. Like, absolutely and they get to go to Monaco and have that experience. But I think it might be because, I think it might be because there's, there's more variety, and it's like maybe at school. Um, but I feel like but I feel like people should take more interest in dual credit. And I can tell you one. And I can tell you one. I'm sorry. I can tell you one of the problems with dual enrollment. How you offer it here? It goes about variety. You are right. The variety that you are The variety that you are offering as dual enrollment is minimal. Minimal. And I read. And I read the presentation when you had it last year. It really. If it really. If if I was trying. If I was trying to do it for my daughter. I would give up. I would give up because of how the presentation because of how is. the presentation is put down together. Put down together. It's like parents it's have like to try parents to figure out all the hoops, that, all they the hoops that they have to jump to go together to go to get a dual enrollment class. It's very hard to it's understand. It's very hard to I understand. I've been explaining some parents that I know, and they are like, "How do you do it?" And they are like, "How do you do it?" And I explain them how to do it. And they pick classes. They the pick classes. Them the problem with them is them. that for them. I'm sorry. What? I'm sorry. I don't what? believe what you're talking about. I don't believe what you're credit. talking about you're is dual credit. You're going into an independent. It's, it's, they're, it, not it's, they're not getting credit. Spring they're not getting credit here at Springfield for those classes. classes. They're taking credits but that's independently. What I'm but that's what I'm telling you that the offering of classes, the variety of classes you are offering, is limited. Very limited. If they do it directly, if they do it directly, that they can choose what to start with. And better they have choice, better they choice. Be more they would be more inclined to do dual enrollment than she's, doing she's it only, than she's, doing she's it only with what, like four, six classes that you right, offer. She's referring to what I talked about in the past, where we, past where students, we where students when they have so many high school, credits, so many high school credits, credits where they could actually start college credits. Where it's not dual credits. It's not dual credits. It's not dual enrollment. They can literally start going to school. There are high schools that are doing it where by the end of their high school career, they're very close to having an associate degree. Pretty much already completed. Uh, pretty much already um, completed. Um, again, that would be something. Again, that would be something for a curriculum committee to. We talked about this last week. We talked about this last week. What's new and exciting in curriculum? And that would be a great. And that would be a great topic for you guys to look further and to see if we could that, move closer that, uh, to that uh, that uh, goal. But in the way I did but it, in the way I my did oldest it, daughter who, my graduated, oldest daughter here who graduated, graduated here in 2014, 2014, she's already in 2014, second, she's year, already of second year of law school. Nicole. Already Nicole finished four already finished four and college she's classes and she's here in 11th grade. So, right. so, so I'll, I'll, be more I'll, I'll be more than willing to tell you what I've done. Tell you what I've done. And I'll volunteer my time. I'll volunteer my time. And you know that when I say I volunteer my time, I do it. So I'll be more than so willing, be because, more it's than willing what? because it's about these what can these kids do. can it's do. Not only take it's not only classes, take college classes. It's just to see also to, to see what they want to be when they when they grow up. Right. So the curriculum meets. Um, was the first? Was the first? No, first, Monday, first Tuesday no, first, of the month. First Tuesday of the month. Um, so, um, so know, feel free to go to know, feel free to go to a curriculum meeting. First Tuesday every month. First Tuesday every month. Six thirty at the district office. Okay. I okay. would okay. I would okay. appreciate if you I would appreciate if you send me an email and, and then I know exactly and where it is and I'll be more than happy to be at that meeting. I mean, do we have it's, I mean, do we have first Tuesday of every month. First Tuesday of every month at the district office at six thirty. It's on the website. It's on the website. Take notes with you. That's okay. That's okay. If you can give me the if you can. Give me the exact date. The exact date. Thank you. Thank you.
Just a clarification. Just a clarification. HR 610 is a U.S. Congress. in front of the U.S. Congress. Not a. It's not a state bill. Ask which bill she was referring to. Ask which bill she was referring to. But there is one at the House also. It was there was state bill two that died. That died because of the community. The community and response the, the and chairman the, the, the chairman of the education so committee receiving so much, so, calls, so many calls, um, emails, and, um, emails so and, that, and so forth that that that, 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 that died. And I, um, from what and I understand, will not, from be, what pursued, I understand will not be pursued in the remaining nine voting days. Nine of voting days of the year. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll bring it back next they'll, year. They'll bring it back next year. It They've been talking about it for well. multiple years as well. Any other public comment? Any other public comment? Do we have a motion to adjourn? Do we have a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. All in favor say aye. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned.